Hey guys, welcome to Kachi Vachi. Today we are talking about all things t-shirt quilts. So whether you plan to make one, whether you're in the middle of making one, or whether you like have goals to make like 20 of them by Christmas, this is definitely for you. These are questions that I get nearly every single time I go to make a quilt for someone or someone is making a quilt and they ask these questions of themselves. So this is not a tutorial that is in the works, so stay tuned. Uh, this is the myriad of questions that I've gotten as 10 years in this field, making hundreds of t-shirt quilts, teaching tons of classes, and working with all different styles and personality types and material types that would potentially go into or want to go into a t-shirt quilt. So, or memory quilt. It doesn't necessarily have to like necessitate t-shirt. You can make it from button downs and all sorts of other things. So I have a list for myself because there are way too many things and I would definitely forget some if I didn't. Uh, so we're just gonna run down this list. Um, the very first thing most people ask is how do I get started? And that's gonna be with shirt prep. And so I typically recommend washing your shirts three times minimum with no fabric softeners. That is the biggest key because you are going to be fusing to the back of your shirt to stabilize it, you have to get anything that would keep that fusible from adhering to your shirt out of it. And that's what like your softener sheets, your like scent beads, all of those things will prevent those stabilizers from fusing. So I wash my shirts three times and then I don't fold them. I stack them one on top of one another and then just fold that whole stack in half. That's gonna help keep wrinkles out and it's gonna mean I don't have to iron every single shirt before I start, which is just, it's a time consuming enough process as is. Um, so that's the very first thing I would do. The next thing I personally do is sort my shirts into stacks of fronts and backs or front onlys. So mine are all separated here. This is a shirt quilt, a t-shirt quilt for a friend coming up hopefully by Christmas. Um, and I just have them separated into, this is gonna be both front and back, this is back only, this is front only, so that you know about how many shirts you're working with. That's always a good place to start, so you can estimate about how much stabilizer you would need then, and then also about the overall size of your quilt, because they get big really fast. Um, so that's the very first two things that I do. Um, the next thing I do is buy my stabilizer. And that is where there's so many options. There are some people who absolutely insist that you do not need a stabilizer. And those people are not my favorite. We'll start there. But totally can be done. And they are not sewing to cotton. Um, so they're sewing shirt to shirt, which means they're only working with like t-shirt or dry fit or something along those lines, sweatshirt. They're not gonna be adding in any button downs, any Girl Scout vests, any like anything wonky to that. And that is a way of doing it. More power to you, rock on if that's what you wanna do. I personally detest it um, just because I hate working with it. They stretch and so when you're sewing stretchy to stretchy, you are less likely to get a perfectly flat seam and that annoys me because as a quilter, I am a bit of a perfectionist. Um, it's partly why I got into quilting. Not all quilters are perfectionists. You do not have to be that way. If you are not that way, rock on. Like I said, go for it. You don't have to do it with stabilizer. Stabilizer does add a hefty amount of time to how much you have to put into it. It does also increase the price anywhere between like 20 to $30, depending on the size of project that you're making. So I use 60 inch wide French Fuse. French Fuse, probably should grab that. I don't know where I put it. Hmm. I have like three yards of it, four yards of it. No clue. Oops, Daisy. Trying to be organized, guys. I'll be right back. Can I come out now? <laughs> okay. So this is French Fuse. <laughs> and I did actually have it in my upcoming projects. 
because this has been an upcoming project and is now the project, so I should have gotten it out. So French Fuse is not like the cotton stabilizers that you would get in bags that come pre-cut. It's rather see-through or sheer. It has a silky side and then a fusible side. And it has a little bit of stretch to it actually in one direction and no stretch in the other. And so this to me keeps the most natural feel of your shirts. It gives you the stabilization that you need and it's really silky drapey. People use this in garment construction all the time. Um, I have used this exclusively pretty much for the last 10 years just because honestly it's how I learned. And then once I did find other products, I still liked this better. So um, this is my French Fuse. Again, it's 60 inch wide. It's like five or seven dollars a yard. Um, and I estimate for every 10 shirts, you need like a yard and a quarter of French Fuse. So that's, or a yard and a quarter of 60 inch wide stabilizer, whatever yours may be. If you're doing like a 12 shirt quilt, you could probably get a yard and a half and you'd be fine. Anything else, I mean, I'd always say err on the side of too much as opposed to having too little. I never ever want to be without a piece of French fuse on the back of my shirt. So this is my go-to. The others you can buy, I think it's um, Jane Taylor is a really, really common one. And hers is essentially a cotton, a very loose weave cotton, like 100% cotton fabric that has a fusible on one side. Um, I don't find it has as much drape to it. I don't find my overall quilt feel at the end to be as soft and cuddly. And it's 60 inch wide and you're paying for two yards of it. So it's like 60 by 72. And it's typically like 22, $25 for one of the bags of it. You can get them on Amazon or wherever. They're really hard to come by these days because everybody's been using that as a like filtration in face masks. That would probably be the next best thing to me. Yeah, aside from that, you can use like Pellon and such like that. Those just get, it gets increasingly more stiff the more you go down that road as far as t-shirt stabilizer products. So again, that's why I use French Fuse. I try to keep it on hand because you never know. I use it as interfacings on garments um, and such like that as well. So it's just a good thing to have as well. So that's what you would want to start with is washing your shirts, stabilizers, and about how much of it do you need? Those are like the main questions that we get. Um, next, can you put the front of my shirt on the front of the quilt and the back of my shirt on the back of the quilt in the exact same place? The answer to that is yes. Is it humanly possible? Yes. Do I ever do it? Not anymore. Honestly, I think three times was enough for me. And after that, I was, I mean, I honestly want to say Quack. it. No, <laughs> anytime anybody asks that. So he's going to bleep that probably because it is the worst. It's so the worst, guys. As far as constructing the top and the back, that's not that big a deal. That just takes a little bit of planning because you're mirroring it. So the front, I have my shirt front at the top left corner. The back, you actually are gonna mirror it. It's gonna be at the back right corner so that when they're sandwiched, they'll line up. So it's just reversing your quilt front to back. That doesn't take that much effort. The annoyance is that you have to make things line up and if you're gonna hand quilt it sure have at it very very I mean never will I hand quilt a t-shirt quilt because hand quilting is such an intense labor of love making a t-shirt quilt alone is so much more time-consuming and is such a labor of love that 
I have no expectation of quadrupling that by hand quilting it. Much less it's, it's freaking t-shirts. It doesn't need to be hand quilted. It is not that much of an heirloom. It's t-shirts at the end of the day. And so machine quilt that baby. I'm not about wasting my time putting some effort that nobody is going to value the amount of effort that it takes to hand quilt something. Not when they're just t-shirts. So I will always, always, always machine quilt. My t-shirt quilts, one, it's so much easier. Two, hand quilting through stabilizers sucks. Three, hand quilting through screen printing sucks. And four, they honestly do not understand the amount of time it takes to hand quilt something, much less to make the t-shirt quilt. So I would absolutely just be spinning my wheels and wasting my time. And that's the only way though, that at this point in my life, I would consider doing front of the shirt on the front, back of the shirt on the back, even if he wanted to pay me a ton of money. It's not worth it to me because what happens as you quilt your quilt, it draws up and that is the nature of quilting. So the more stitching you put into it, the more it's going to make it draw up. So where it starts at the top and it may line up on the first row after that, those shirts front to back aren't going to match and they aren't going to meet. And that's really annoying as a quilter getting it lined up on the quilt frame to begin with is challenging enough. Getting it lined up when you're making a quilt sandwich on the floor is that much more challenging. And then keeping it lined up as you quilt it is nearly impossible and not worth the stress and frustration and aggravation that comes with it. So then in addition to that, you're talking about you have to have a border at least on the backing, or you have to have enough foresight to know exactly which shirts are gonna end up on the outside of your back quilt, and then you're gonna have to make those shirts larger on whatever side so that it gives you room to clamp onto the quilting machine. Again, entirely not worth it. Um, you can put the front of the shirts on the front, the back of the shirts on the back, I would not ever offer to line them up. I would never ask anyone else to line them up because it's a nearly impossible task. Or if you do ask and they agree, then be 100% graceful and willing for it to not match perfectly because those shirts are never going to seem front to back where it actually each box lines up with the box on the back. It's just not going to happen and it's too much to ask of someone. And they probably have not done it before and probably are just saying yes because they don't know how miserable it is. So rather than ask them and have them agree out of ignorance, you can go forth knowing, saying, hey, I have this box of shirts and I'm really not gonna do that to you because I love you <laughs> or because I don't hate you, even if you don't love them. Um, so can it be done? Yes, it is by and away the first thing I will reject doing 100% of the time. Um, you literally couldn't pay me enough to do it because I value the quality of my work too much to put out a product that I would not be satisfied with myself and that's 100% what that is asking for. So yeah, just don't do that to anybody. Um, I said, um, Oh darn. Right? Forgive me guys. Next, jerseys. So these are two jerseys that my friend wanted in her quilt. Jury's still out. I'm kind of just deciding how much work I'm, I want to put into it is really what that means. Um, so jerseys typically come in two different forms. One is a sewn on number. Another is like a double layered sewn on number. And then sometimes they're just like screen printed or this is like a, it's, it's vinyl. Yeah, it's not even just normal vinyl. It's really, really thick rubbery vinyl. Yeah, they, they do 
sports-specific vinyl like, for jerseys? There you go. Talk to the sports guy. I'm clearly not him. Um, I mean, he's clearly not the sports guy, but he knows more than me, so we're going to go with that. They make sports vinyl, guys. Um, that's what I'm talking about here. So whether it's sports vinyl for the number or just sports vinyl on it, it takes more work to do a jersey. Um, your jersey has holes through it, so some people will absolutely just use this as is. Your batting potentially could come through those holes. Really kind of depends on the batting that you use. I only ever use Quilter's Dream Batting, which is a really, really good quality batting. It's needle punch, it doesn't have a scrim. I don't typically have issues with it and I don't typically do anything special to the back. I will put my French Fuse on it because I don't find it to be too bothersome. Um, it's one of multiple options. It kind of depends on what color batting I'm going to be using, honestly. So you can see there, to me, there is not a drastic amount of white showing through on this. Not enough to be bothersome. It's entirely personal preference. White on white, you'd potentially see it a little bit more, more so than the dark. So this is the white with the white French fuse behind it, and then white with just my hand. So you can kind of see those shadows a little bit more with the white. Again, I because I'm using French fuse, I don't find that I have much issue. I don't have my glue coming through the holes. It depends on the type of the holes in the jersey. There's different jersey types, and some of them have larger holes. When it has a larger hole, I typically will recycle one of the shirt backings that doesn't have a graphic on it and put a double-sided fusible on the front side of that and then fuse that to the inside of my jersey and that would act to cover those holes. Um, that's not really, the holes don't bother me. The holes are like par for the course. What really comes into play for me is the actual quilting. So if I am planning to custom quilt the t-shirt quilt, then that's one thing. I will probably go ahead and put them in. If I'm going to do an edge to edge, so just one design across the whole of the quilt, that's when it makes me hesitate. So this jersey here has, it's relatively small. It's only one letter, or sorry, only one number. I promise I know the difference, guys. Um, this one is a name and two really big numbers. This one gives me much more pause just because when I'm doing an edge to edge design across this, if I'm stitching over this number for any length of time, which that's a long space to be stitching over, there's a much, much higher potential that my thread would shred and break. Whereas just stitching across here, this like eight, and also this eight is a like material, it doesn't, it's not as rigid as this. My thread would be less likely to shred across this number eight than it would across this number two. And then if I went straight from this long patch to this long patch, I can pretty much guarantee that my thread is gonna shred and break, whether I'm using cotton or polyester or whatever it may be. I'm not putting t-shirts or I'm not putting these into my t-shirt quilt because I am doing an edge to edge design and I don't want my thread to be breaking. One, it decreases the integrity of that row of quilting, which I want them to be able to be laundered readily. Two, this is not comfortable when you're curling up and you get a big patch of number by your face. That sucks. Um, so one, if you do decide to put your jerseys in them, put them at the bottom of the quilt or put them at a place that's not going to be like under your arms or by your face when you're cuddled up underneath it because it really sucks to try and go and curl up and you have a big scratchy number that you're putting your head on. Um, I'm going to stop saying, um, can you no. crop those out? No, I mean I can't. Guys, I'm sorry. 
It's just yeah. like, it's okay to pause, you know. Yeah. I'm still working on this YouTube personality. Like so. if she's doing a great job. Perfect. So this is my personal like vendetta with these. I don't hate jerseys, but if you're going to have someone else quilt them, then you're either going to be potentially paying a little bit more for them to crop out and not stitch over that, or you're going to be paying more for them to custom quilt it, or they're just going to say that they're going to go right over it and then they either don't know that it's going to shred and break or don't care that it's going to shred and break and they'll just restart it four or five times and then you'll have restarts and tie offs in the middle of it and that again it reduces the integrity of the quilting which means when you launder it it'll be more likely for those stitches to come out things that I'm not willing to do I personally if anything have considered taking and putting this little guy down a border because that's much, much smaller. This is just screen printed. I'm pretty confident that this would not cause my thread to shred and break. This is a much more viable option to me. It's also smaller, so it's not gonna be as uncomfortable if it ends up under your arm. Kind of depends on if you're incorporating this into the quilt or putting it in a border, if you're putting on borders, if you're gonna sew this to something else to make it into a larger block. Those are things I would consider before personally putting this whole thing in. Or you can take and cut the word out or the name, depending. Sometimes the names are printed on and the numbers are sewn on. The big printed on can cause issues as well, especially this like sports vinyl. It's very, very rubbery. And so it depends on what your long armor or what you have as an option to help get over those spaces. There's a few things that you can do that would help prevent your thread from shredding. This has a lot of drag to it. So more than thread shredding, it causes the quilt to like bunch up and then you can end up with a pleat in those places, which is unsightly can't tell you how many quilts I've seen come in with that and wanted help. And that's the nature of this material. There are things that you can do to prevent it beforehand. Once it's in there, it's less than ideal, but you can still work your way around it. So my consideration is to take just the sleeves. You honestly wanna ask yourself or ask your customer what's more worthwhile to you. Would you rather have your jersey full and functional? Would you rather have them turn this into a pillow where they're just cutting a square out of it and stuffing it so you still get the whole effect? Or is it worth it for you to cut up a $40 to $120 jersey, depending, for just a small sleeve, rendering your jersey itself unusable, whether you're using it or not, it's entirely up to you there. Some people would rather keep the jersey or turn it into a pillow then have just a tiny piece cut out of it. So things to consider there. I'm pretty sure I'm not putting these in my friend's quilt. Just, and I love her, okay? That's an, like, <laughs> that's another thing. I really love this person because I am making this for them in the first place. And I don't love myself enough to put jerseys into my own things. On top of I don't like the feel of them in my quilts. And if you're actually going to use it, then that's like, it's entirely personal preference there. Some people don't care. I mean, you wore the jersey at some point in time and didn't let it bother you then. It bothers me in a quilt. I don't like the change in texture between the numbers and the rest of my quilt. So jerseys. Take them or leave them. Absolutely have their place. Maybe if it's a whole thing of jerseys, I don't know. You decide for yourself. It's a lot more work and potentially more money. So, bulky graphics. 
that's another thing. I don't think I have any major bulky graphics here. Bulky graphics oftentimes are like Jared's shirt. Jared, come see. No. <laughs> Seriously? Are you going to tuck your beard into your shirt? Oh, <laughs> it's got your body heat on it. I hate oh. this. Oh, gosh. Okay. You're going to learn a random fact about me. I despise residual body heat. <laughs> it is a thing in my, my life. My not that. I don't want to be in camera. I just don't like it. And this is still warm from him wearing it. <laughs> so, large bulky graphics. Okay. Like sitting in a movie seat after somebody got up and it's still warm just grosses me out. Okay, so this is a bulky graphic because this is a very, very large graphic in comparison to your average t-shirt graphic, which is gonna be less than 12 inches. So this in comparison to this, how do you make these two things fit together? If you send your shirts off to those like $75 for your t-shirt quilt, 12 shirts, they will 100% take and cut this to 12 inches. Doesn't matter if they take the whole design or not. I despise that as well. I think it's disgusting. I can't stand not being able to see the complete design. It drives me up the wall. We'll just beat that. <laughs> right. <laughs> you like that. wouldn't even get a whole word at all. Like, just no. You get, you, you wouldn't get anything. It's awful. And so maybe they'd come down and get the whole Phineas or something like that. That's the thing to decide. Is that gonna bother you? How much math are you willing to do? How much math are you capable of doing? How much money do you have? <laughs> yeah, if you're paying somebody else to do it, like how much money do you have? <laughs> that sort of thing. These, I have no problem using large graphics in my shirt, t-shirt quilts. However, they do take a little bit more foresight and a little bit more stabilizer and a little more finagling to make fit with other designs. So I start by cutting these out. Oftentimes, they are band tees, shockingly enough. So band tees are really cool though because they're the larger graphics. Everything else tends to be like sports or high school and stuff like that. And they're not typically oversized graphic because high schools don't want to pay to have those printed. Bands, it's all about the aesthetic, and so they tend to be much larger graphics, which is really fun. If you're doing a whole quilt with those, it's actually not that bad. If you have like 12 of these with oversized graphics, you can typically tend to make them incorporate relatively easily. Um, if you have two of them and you're incorporating them into a bunch of regular size t-shirt quilts, it does take a little bit more work there. Not drastically so though. I don't think they're that bad. The biggest thing to contend with these is whether or not it is screen printed or whether or not it's vinyl and so or heat transfer or whatever it may be. This I have no problems with because this is screen printed. These you can quilt over it seamlessly. I don't have a single issue quilting through this. When it's this like heat transfer or cheap stuff, um, like on this dry fit, I wouldn't even necessarily say this is cheap stuff, but this is that sports vinyl, <laughs> whatever that is. Sports vinyl has that rubberized aspect to it and you either have to bring it to someone who knows what they're working with with this. So knows to put either some golden threads paper or something over this when they're quilting it to help prevent that from shredding or dragging, then it's fine. If they don't know what they're working with, then you could potentially end up with thread breaks in those places. And again, that compromises the integrity of the quilt to me. I'm just not a huge fan of that. So how do you know if it's heat transfer vinyl versus screen printing versus sports vinyl? And what does that mean for you at the end of the day? If you run your hand across it and you can hear a difference, so I can't hear anything with Jared's band tee, but I can definitely hear it here. It's not that I will leave these shirts out. I'm absolutely including these. 
However, when I go to quilt them, I will address the quilting of this much differently than I would address the quilting of this. This is completely seamless. This may take some finagling, not because my thread would have a higher potential to shred, though it very well does. More than anything, these, depending on the foot that you have on your machine when you're actually quilting it, these have more drag to them, particularly the sports vinyl. And you really don't want pleats and puckers across the design, because that's the most important aspect. That's why you're putting these into your quilts in the first place. So I would take a piece of tissue paper or take a piece of Golden Threads quilting paper and lay that over top of this and then quilt it. And that's going to much more seamlessly allow my foot to travel across this design without causing those potential pleats or even thread breaks. As far as thread breaks go, it definitely, because that's so dense here, it's putting more friction against your thread as your needle goes down through the quilt. So the very first thing I would do is make sure that I'm using the right size needle to the right size thread. If you're using a smaller needle than your thread recommends, it's going to have more friction against the thread and have more potential for it to break. I would use a glide foot or a Teflon foot or um, like a roller foot, depending on whether you're long arm quilting it or doing it on your domestic machine walking foot, I would use whatever would potentially allow me the most grace to transfer over these. And I would use Sewer's Aid. Sewer's Aid is a silicone based lubricant. It's not oil, so it's not going to like put an oil stain on your shirt. It washes out um, if it does like put a little droplet on your shirt, but that lubricates the thread as it goes through this. And that helps with that friction particularly on these types of like really rubbery designs here, that silicone lubricates the thread and keeps and prevents it from breaking. Good job shaking the whole camera. Sorry. Jeez, he's putting his feet up on his desk, guys. It's his desk, it's his prerogative. So, whatever, it's your loss. Uh, <laughs> he's giving me all the sassy eyes right now, too. <laughs> Very distracting. So, Sewer's Aid, Glide Foot, potentially using Glide Paper of some sort, whether it's Golden Threads or Tissue Paper, once more. That's how I would address any of these. Aside from this, which it's nicely cooled off now, so you can actually, I'm gonna hold on to it a second. You can use any of those and you don't really need that when it's like very nicely screen printed. The next thing on my list, or we're going to skip ahead actually, is holes. And I'm pretty sure I saw one on this. Okay. Yeah. So this shirt has a hole in it. This is in the armpit. That is not going to cause you any issues whatsoever in your quilting. You can 100% use this. If you have a hole going right across the center of your shirt, that would potentially cause you some issues. You're gonna to have to fix that before you would put it in the quilt. There's multiple ways you can go about fixing it. Very rarely will it be absolutely seamless. You would potentially almost guarantee that you would be able to see that. Do I think that those are probably the shirts that you most want in your project? Yeah, oftentimes because they show more living and it's memories of those moments that you made ripping that shirt that are why you want that shirt in there. I typically think it's worthwhile whether it's a stain or a hole or a rip, either leave the stain. I think those give it character. I think it's part of the whole aesthetic of it, honestly. It's that a memory was made in this and you look at that and you can remember hey, I wore that when I went to go eat crawfish and I got tons of crawfish fat all over it. And so now this shirt has that memory attached to it. I think that's worthwhile. Um, I don't have any problem with stains or rips. The bigger the rip, the more you'll see it. The bigger the rip, the bigger the story most often. So, yeah. And dry fit or tech shirts. So let's see what this is. 
fitted. Very helpful. And this is 67% nylon and I can't see whatever the percentage of lycra and then linen and polyester and more lycra. So this has a shell which is inside and then it has the actual like dry fit. You can 100% use dry fit. Honestly, you almost don't even need to stabilize them as much as the cotton shirts. I do still stabilize them so that everything has that same density to it in the overall quilt when it's done. You would put this in your quilt just like any other. The cheaper the dry fit, the more potential that there is a run. Stabilizing it helps prevent the runs. I don't have any problems using any dry fit, polos, whatever it may be. Go ahead and throw them in your quilt. You'll be fine. doesn't cause any different. Like, as long as it can be laundered, you can put it in your quilt. Patches. So my friend does have quite a few patches here that we will be putting onto her quilt. Thankfully, they were not sewn onto anything prior to. I will 100% quilt her quilts and then attach her patches. So much easier. Quilting over patches on the long arm, again, it's very, very dense, much, much more likely for it to end up shredding my thread. Can you crop out around these and just do your edge to edge? Yes, you can. When you crop a design on a long arm, I'm gonna show you on something larger, like how about these jerseys? Okay, so if I were to put this jersey in my quilt and say I'm gonna crop out around this design, when I have a design programmed to just go across the whole quilt and then come to here and stop, it's very likely that it's going to come here, stop, tie off, jump across here, tie off, do a little thing, and then come tie on, and you're just going to stitch and it's going to come and go all the way across this, just like that. So when it's coming here, it really depends on what foot you have on your long arm or what foot your long armor has. But what tends to happen, and I can't tell you how many times I've seen it, is that when you program your design and it comes here, then it's either gonna start just inside because it has drag across this and so it doesn't make it all the way across, or if you crop from here to here and program it to go like a half inch away from it, you tend to be okay, but then you have your quilting a half inch away from your logo, and are you okay with that? If I had white thread on this, sure, probably so. If I have black thread on this, probably not so much. I don't think I would really like the aesthetic of that. The other thing, it's just gonna take more time as the long armor and you will have to pay more money for them to crop this out because it takes more time to program it to crop over it and it takes more time for it to quilt and crop over this. How much money do you wanna put into it? How much time do you wanna put into it? Are you personally long arming it? Are you sending it to someone to be long-armed once you've quilted it? Those are the things that I consider. The same with the patches. If I program a design and it's gonna come here, almost more so, because this is a really thick patch, then when it goes and jumps across this, it's much, it's got a lot more drag because this is thicker. And it may or may not start either right inside the other side of my patch if you program it right on it, or you have to program it just a little bit away from it and then it really kind of depends on what color this is going on and what color thread's being used. Thankfully, I don't have to make any of those decisions because while she was a very good little Girl Scout here, she apparently did not get her sewing patch. So none of them got sewn onto her vest. <laughs> so I will be putting a swatch from the back of her vest onto her quilt, and then I'm gonna be stitching these on once it comes off the frame. You will absolutely see the outline of where I will stitch it through on the back is not going to bother her. It will be a much cleaner aesthetic. If these were sewn into something, oftentimes what I will do is cut them out around it and then refuse them onto my quilt after it is done. And so I will do the same process. This just will be a little bit faster because I don't have to undo something that's already been done. So potentially, I would be taking my number, cutting out around it, 
and then taking that and stitching it to my quilt once it's been quilted. I wouldn't do that with jerseys because you lose the aesthetic of it. Just having two numbers there, people don't tend to get it. It's part of the jersey. That's why they want it in the quilt. Again, that's your own prerogative as to whether you include it or not. Patches. These little pins, those are going to go on after. She can choose to take those on or off as you would. I absolutely would not have those on it if it's going to a long armor. So these, though, thankfully, will get sewn into it post quilting. And that's all of them. So these I'll probably, these will go onto a block because it's going to be like a block in the quilt. And again, I will put these further down in the overall quilt because you don't want that right by your face. It's not comfortable. I don't like wearing things that have large embroideries on them and I don't like a quilt that has things with large embroideries on them. And that's what a patch is. These, because they're not part of a unit like a Girl Scout vest, at least I don't know that they are. Maybe this is a Girl Scout, I'll have to ask her. I think it's school stuff though. These are just going to go probably in an L along a border. I think it's super cute having like a border of patches on the top left and bottom right, opposing corners, whatever it may be. I like that aesthetic for my patches. I also like that aesthetic for the little lapel logos which let's find a lapel logo. Mm -hmm. If you have pockets, you can do that with your pockets, whatever it may be when you have small logos or sleeve logos. Sometimes you'll find designs with just something on the sleeve and that's a great place for them. Ah, so this would be my lapel, getting these all out of order. So this is a polo. You don't have a ton of the shirt that's really usable. So I would cut out this square. I'll probably take this and put it as my opposing corner to those and make myself a little design in the corner of my border. If you're not doing borders, then you can take your patches and put them into like a block on your quilt but this for me because I have enough patches and then like the corner logo I will probably put this going in my bottom and then this would be my top corner and you'll have your different logos lapel logos patches any small emblems you can absolutely incorporate them into the quilt patches are much easier to incorporate after than they are in the middle or before quilting. Personally, I found that. These, however, would have to go into the quilt, not as a patch, just because I feel like without the marrowing, so the marrowing stitch around the edge of your patch, you would either have to do a satin stitch and essentially turn this into a patch to do that or sew it in like a block. I like to sew it in like a block. So that's my personal preference there. You absolutely can use patches, you can use lapel logos, you can use sleeve logos, whatever it may be. It does take a little more time and thought and effort to incorporate them though. And we'll pick this up. All the things. This was not part of that. I'm trying to keep her Girl Scouts separate. That's another thing. Keeping yourself organized in the middle of your project is super, super helpful. If you're doing multiple of these, I would absolutely not pull out someone else's shirts in the middle of doing one because you don't want to confuse the shirts. So I keep everything separate. Her thing, she had a ton of patches. These are specifically Girl Scouts though, so I do want to keep them separate. Buttons. If it's going to a long armor once more, it's going to cost more or whether they're free motioning. If they're just free motioning, if that's all that they offer, then you're probably okay. It's easy enough to avoid a jersey. It's easy enough to avoid buttons when you're just free motion quilting something. If they're computer programming it, it takes more work. Your computer 
doesn't know that there's a button there. So even though you may have the design stop here and start on the other side, it thinks it can still just move straight over that and that causes the shirt to shift if you have a button in it. If it's going to a long armor, I would take the buttons off and reapply them once it's been quilted. If it's not going to a long armor or if your long armor is free motion quilting it, you're probably okay to leave the buttons and they'll just avoid them. It really kind of depends on the actual process of quilting. If you're quilting it yourself, you can probably leave your buttons and just avoid them in the quilting process. Personal preference. But you can incorporate them into your quilt. Sometimes it'll be before, sometimes it would be after, depending on how it's actually going to be quilted. Can a kid help? Depends on the maturity of the kid and the age potentially in their interest level. There's a ton of ironing, a ton of ironing in t-shirt quilting. Absolutely use them for some ironing if they are at a responsible enough age where they won't touch the iron, where they can like usefully hold an iron and move it. You are not actually ironing in the sense that you're moving your iron back and forth. You're letting your iron sit for 10 seconds and then moving it. Great for counting skills. However, most kids that can use the iron know how to count to 10 and aren't gonna wanna do that indefinitely for hours on end. It, yes and no. Kind of, it will slow the process. It's already a slow process. Depends on how much time and effort if they're making it for a friend, absolutely let them help. Just set realistic expectations for yourself and for them. It's not gonna go as fast as if you just did it, probably. My daughter's one and a half. She will not be helping with this quilt. She may sit down here and enjoy the process and play with the scraps, sure. But as far as actually cutting anything or iron anything, not so much. 100% they could help with layout if it's like their own shirts or their own sports teams and all that stuff. They totally can help say, oh, I want this here, or, oh, I want that there. Outside of that, it kind of depends on the kid. But yes, kids absolutely could help. Probably, I guess, starting at around age seven and up. Um, I think I was ironing at age seven. I don't know. It's been a little while. But, I mean, I started sewing when I was five. So they could sew, if they can sew a straight seam, <laughs> it depends on how OCD you are. <laughs> so if they can sew a straight seam, if you're okay with it being potentially a little bit wonky, absolutely they can help. Um, I would 100% let a five-year-old sew their own. They're not gonna have that many t-shirts to be able to do it, but, well, I don't know, your kids might. We're kind of minimalist. I mean, Frances stays in pajamas until 10 p.m., so, and then she gets a new set of pajamas. Maybe, maybe. It depends on your kid, depends on their personality, depends on how much, like, attention span they have, yeah. What tools do I need? That's a bit subjective. Absolutely, I wouldn't do it without a sewing machine. Are you doing it, are you just piecing your top or are you actually quilting it? So if you are just piecing together the top and then gonna send that to someone to long arm it or have it quilted somewhere else, you wouldn't need as much, potentially. Personally, I would not assemble a t-shirt quilt without a rotary cutter and ruler. So I would, these are the two things I'm definitely going to be using. I probably will use, this is a 10 by 10, I'll use a 12 by 12. Um, maybe, we'll see. And then a long ruler, scissors. I wouldn't do it without a good pair of scissors. So I'm going to, with every single shirt, cut up my sleeves and cut across the shoulder and the top of the sleeve. I'm sorry, cut up my sides. That being the case, I want a scissors that can cut 
fabric. I mean, if you've ever cut anything other than fabric with your scissors, it's going to make that process so much harder. So I would either get a new, even just a new like $10 pair of scissors that's never cut paper, it would 100% be worth it to me to have them as just my fabric scissors because you do a lot of pre-cutting with just scissors. You can do it with your rotary cutter. I tend to just use scissors, but the scissors, rotary cutter, ruler, and a cutting mat. If you're using a rotary cutter, you have to have a surface to cut on with that. A sewing machine, thread. You can get away without a quarter inch foot most of the time with this, as long as you have consistent seam allowances, it doesn't necessarily have to be quarter inch seam allowances because you're not doing triangles and points and such like that. So those would be my absolute basics. A stabilizer, I wouldn't do it without stabilizer which means you need an iron. And even just in quilting, you need an iron. So an iron, something to iron on, even if it's just a towel, you need your stabilizer. Yeah. Sewing machine, thread, multiple needles. You'll break a needle potentially, have more on hand. Scissors, rotary cutter, ruler, cutting mat. You can do it without straight pins. I would definitely say I personally would have a pressing cloth. A pressing cloth literally can be the back of the shirt. It's not anything super, super fancy um, or just a piece of cotton fabric. So that anybody would have. You can use a dish towel. So those are the things that I wouldn't quilt without though for my t-shirt quilt. If you are quilting it yourself, Kind of depends on if you're going to try free motion or if you're going to just do straight line quilting. No matter what, I would 100% have an extension table for my sewing machine or have it inset into a table. And I would 100% have a walking foot if you're going to do straight line quilting or have a machine that has AccuFeed or something of that, that nature. Those are the actual like stitching all the layers together to finish it part of it. Those are things I would not do a t-shirt quilt without. Can a beginner do it? Absolutely. I have so many people who are not quilters at all, just sewers, and they've made a dozen t-shirt quilts. So you don't have to be a quilter to make a t-shirt quilt. It's one of the easier quilts that you potentially even could do. It is just more time consuming because there's more steps involved because you're not using yardage, you're using clothes. How many shirts? that is again very subjective it depends on the size of the logo of your shirt i mean if all of your shirts just have corner lapel logos like a lot of sorority stuff is small like that or it's that and then really big letters this is not a very large logo this i will take and if i had a 12 inch block of that it would be super boring to me so I will turn this into a half a block probably, and it will be something small. So this would be about the size. In comparison, this is a much larger design. So it, there is no set, you can do it with 12 shirts and get this size quilt, unless you're sending it to the t-shirt farms. and. Again, it doesn't matter what size the logo is, they're gonna cut a 12 inch block and sew it to another 12 inch block and you get what you get. And then you'll have a set size at the end of it. Whereas if you're making it yourself, you can accommodate whatever size graphic it is to make it more aesthetically pleasing. I would put these two in different blocks. This other side actually would probably be a good bottom to this top one. So it kind of takes math, it takes playing with your design, seeing how many darks you have, how many lights you have. If you end up with one black shirt and the rest are like light gray and white, where do you put the black shirt? Do you want to put it in the center? If Do you have a definitive center depending on how many shirts you're working with? So it kind of takes some finagling and playing with there, but 
those will probably go into one for me or something like that. It just depends on the shirts. I'll cut them all apart and see what I have to work with um, now that I've chosen what will actually go into the quilt. As a general rule, I will say this, 12 shirts is my minimum. That's gonna make a small lap. It depends on if you're putting shirt next to shirt, if you're putting a sashing between them, so just a strip of just fabric between them, if you're putting borders on, all of those will change the overall size of your quilt. T-shirt quilts get really big really fast and they get really heavy really fast. The 25 shirts tends to be like a queen or king if you're putting borders and sashings on them. And then because you're stabilizing behind each one, that's a super heavy quilt. It's not something that you're going to be able to leave on your bed all year round or honestly, I don't mean I don't know a ton of people that want to put t-shirt quilts on their bed. College students, sure. 40 year old married couples typically don't. It kind of depends on the person. But they're very heavy. Here in the South, it's not something that I want to make very big because they're so heavy that I would never get to use them or you would never get to use them. They're just going to be thrown across the back of a chair and that's fine. That's the aesthetic. You can make it as big as you want then. The more shirts you have, the less likely they are to be used is kind of where it's at. But then also, you've got so many shirts, who wants to make two or three of these? Put them all into one. It's kind of your prerogative there. I typically would say max out at 25 to 30 shirts, depending on the sizes of the logos though. So typically anywhere between 12 and 30 would be my average. If you're gonna do more than that, it would be a front and back quilt for me. Again, just because who wants two t-shirt quilts? Very rarely are you going to have place or room for that in your life. Just incorporate them onto the back. It's there to hold the memories, not necessarily to be functional and used, which that is what it is. Take it <laughs> as a grain of salt. Your quilt is probably just gonna house the memories and will not necessarily be daily used in someone's life. And so you're putting a lot of effort and work into something that's going to get sit in a closet. <laughs> that's my overall. I've seen it happen so, 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 so many times. And so I have a hard time wanting to invest too terribly much into them for that reason. That's my own jadedness though. Don't be jaded by me, guys. what to do about different size shirts. Yeah, so we've kind of already talked about that just in choosing our number of shirts. The smaller the design, the more shirts you can incorporate without it getting too big. The larger your designs, the harder they are to incorporate with smaller designs, but you absolutely can. It just takes more math. It also, the harder part, honestly, isn't necessarily the size of the design. It's when you have grown man size shirts with little boy size shirts and you're trying to put those together. That takes that much more math. So when you have like a full size banty and then their baby onesie all on the same thing, it's just gonna take more time and work to figure out how to incorporate those together. You absolutely can. It would be doing things like this so that you make two shirts that will be about the same size as another of your shirts and so those could go next to each other. I will be making this as a collage quilt. I'm very, very controlled in how I lay things out because I don't like 500 different sizes of things. I don't like the amount of time and math it requires to do that and I don't like Y seams. I will 100% take and find the largest design from the logos on all the shirts, and that will be what I fit everything else to. So if I have like a 15 inch by 15 inch shirt, then I'm gonna have a row where everything is gonna end up at 15 inches. So I would take this and sew it to this and sew it to something else until that reaches 15 inches, and then that's gonna go next to my 15 inch design. I'm not gonna sit here and incorporate a three and a half inch with a five inch with a seven inch and sit there and do all sorts of math to make that happen. 
I'm gonna sew this to this to this, and then it's gonna measure 15 inches. So we're gonna get five, 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 and if that doesn't work, we're gonna pick a different design. And we're gonna do it until we can find something that's gonna coordinate and not be too terribly much math for me. Because I don't wanna put that much effort and into something that's gonna go in a closet once more. I mean, honestly, these have been in a storage unit for like years now, so it's, they will absolutely be far more cherished once they are into a quilt, but it's not necessarily gonna be something to be used every day, so. And is there a difference between a t-shirt blanket and a t-shirt quilt? Yes. A t-shirt blanket is what comes from the factory t-shirt farms. All it is, they're taking and cutting up 12 inch squares, sewing them together, they're not stabilizing them, they're not putting a batting, they're not actually quilting it. They're gonna take a piece of fleece and put that right sides to right sides. So if this was my quilt, they would take a piece of fleece, put that here, right side, sew all the way around it, leaving an opening, turn it right side out and stitch around the end which means that when you're done, you can sit there and separate the top from the back, and it sucks. It's awful to use, doesn't wear well over time. Does it incorporate your shirts into a memory that's not putting a ton of effort and thought and money into? Yes. Do they have their place? Sure. Is it what I would do with my grandmother's wardrobe? No. I'm not a fan of t-shirt blankets because I'm not a fan of any kind of blanket like that. I want it to actually be quilted. So a t-shirt quilt is either going to be stitched together with batting to like seal all those layers together and keep them from being able to be separated. It will launder and wear and last twice as long, three times as long as a t-shirt blanket would. And it's aesthetically going to look a lot better in my opinion. Minky flannel or fleece on the back. Can you do those things? Yes. Minky between flannel and fleece is gonna have a slightly longer life. It's gonna be super soft. Sure. <laughs> Fran's up from her nap, guys, and she's trying to tell us about something. Um, so the peril to me with minky and flannel and fleece is that they're not going to launder and last as long as the shirts would. If you're passing it down, if you're holding on to these as something that's actually like going to be used, if it's a memory quilt from a deceased one's garments and such like that, I would never put those things because in those moments I want it to last an eternity. I want to be able to hold on to those memories of that person from here out. I would not put minky flannel or fleece on the back of something that is actually going to be cherished. If it's your high school t-shirts and you plan on probably getting rid of it at some point in life or not necessarily passing it down to your kids, then sure, go for it. The things with that is that they're going to pill up or get matted or wear out sooner than a cotton backing would. Does it potentially have a softer feel at the onset? Yes, long term, cotton's gonna feel much better. I personally just put cotton on the back. I have put all of those on the back of quilts because that's what people want and that's fine. I will 100% try and talk you out of it before I do it though. What is the longevity of a t-shirt quilt? Depends on the state of the t-shirts. It depends on if you stabilize them. It depends on if you had it long armed and your thread broke a million times going over logos. All of those things play into it. It depends on if your dog is crawling on it or your cat. It depends on if you put it in your closet and leave it. I mean, it's, there is no way of saying for sure that it's gonna last generations to generations, but if you sew it with good quality material, stabilize it, quilt it well, launder it on the gentle cycle and lay flat or tumble dry low. 
you could probably easily get 30, 40 years out of it. Um, if you use it every day and wash it every month, maybe 10 years, it kind of depends. And even then, you could replace the binding or have someone do some repairs down the road. It entirely depends on the lifestyle of the person using it and what actually happens with it. If it's used as a picnic quilt twice a year, you'll probably have it to pass down for the next 100 years. It just depends on how it's actually being used is really the reality of that. If you fold it and put it on the foot of a bed in a guest room, you'd have it for 100 years as long as you don't have pets, um, that is, that sleep on it. Because pets do deteriorate. It's just kind of like a person using it, if not worse. I'm not a pet person, sorry. Is my quilt machine washable? Kind of depends on what you put into it. I personally don't put anything into a quilt that cannot be machine washed. So for me, yes. If you have dry clean only materials or if you're working with like heirloom pieces from memory quilts more so than t-shirt quilts, probably not. Most of the time, 100%. I won't put it into a t-shirt quilt if it's not able to go through the washing machine. So yes, most of the time. Depends on what you put into it. Was that her farting? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my kid had some loud farts. Um, can I include sweatshirts and other items that are not t-shirts in my quilt? Yes. Should they be launderable? In my opinion, yes. I will be putting, I had a sweatshirt, yeah. I've gotten these all out of order just for you guys. I have a sweatshirt, it's gonna go into it. You don't necessarily have to stabilize them. I find that because they're thicker, I don't put a stabilizer on mine anymore. I did when I started, but they are, are thicker already and so it keeps them feeling more like the t-shirt with stabilizer to not have a stabilizer on it. Um, if you're putting 20 of them, I would probably put stabilizer just because I don't want to work with that many things without stabilizer. But I would not use the pocket. It's too bulky to me to have that if you do have to use the pocket, depending on logos, I would 100% stitch it down. But I will be putting a sweatshirt into it. They do tend to kind of stand out because they typically have a slightly larger logo or an embroidered logo. So put it at a place where it's going to be comfortable. Put it at a place where it's featured nicely if you do use them, I think. Can you use other items? That was part of that. So I have a gown from graduation. I wouldn't put the actual gown, again, because it's not a comfortable material and it doesn't really house all that much to actually like add to the aesthetic of the quilt. I'm just going to be cutting off one of these and essentially using it as a patch. A stole is another like kind of odd thing that you potentially could put into it. This is definitely not launderable. So this, I don't know what this is, but it's like plastic velvet. And so I will not be putting this into the quilt because I want it to be able to go through the washing machine and survive the next 10 years. And this will prevent that from happening. Could you? If it's only ever gonna be hung on a wall or something, sure. You can put whatever you want in it at that point. Would I? Depends on how much I love the person. So. And duplicates is the last thing. Can you put duplicates? I keep them and hang on to them. If you need another block in the quilt, if you find that like, you just have a gap and you need a filler, it's very, very handy to have a few extra things that are not super important to the person, not super vital to the overall. Like you have a stack of these have to be in the quilts and then these I could live without if they're not in the quilt. And that's what my duplicates would fall into. Um, it's personal preference there. It's just two of this exact shirt 
are there different memories in that shirt potentially does one look better than the other are there less stains i would go with that one it kind of depends um, but i do have a stack of potentials in case i need them to help fill out the shirt the other thing you can do is use the backs of shirts that are blank as fillers if you just have small gaps where you had to make things fit together with large shirts to small shirts. You can use scraps from the other shirts as those fillers if you don't have excess shirts, that is. so. And that is that. I hope this has been helpful. <laughs> I hope that I've answered some questions that you may have had and potentially some questions you didn't know that you had. If you have any other questions, absolutely send me a link in the comments. I would be happy to answer those for you. I've been doing this a long time and have made a ton of t-shirt quilts. If you want to see the process of actually making a t-shirt quilt, subscribe. That video is coming out soon. We are working on it. It will be with these exact shirts. If you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe. We will be putting out more things, beginning sewing, beginning quilting, all that sort of stuff. If you like other things. If you like us. If, yeah, if you like us. We have another channel. It is called The Buying Experience. And we share with you all the effort and thought that we put into buying things for our home, for our channel, for ourselves, all sorts of different random things. And it's not necessarily unboxings. It is the actual process of doing some research and finding the best solution and how we go about that. So if you enjoy seeing us or talking to us, absolutely subscribe and check out that channel as well it is the buying experience. Thanks and good luck with your t-shirt quilts. We hope to see you again soon. Okie dokie. So sweaty. <laughs>